Hey, what's up and welcome back to Interpreting the Stars, where again I'm heading back to the Fantasia Film Festival to talk about a brand new film, and this one is mega interesting. It's Glass House. Glass House ultimately follows a family that lives in an isolated estate surrounded by beautiful gardens and plant life, which only exists thanks to multiple dead bodies they kill and bury beneath the earth, as it's well documented that corpses are amazing fertilizers. Outside of the estate is a dead and dying world, victim to the shred, a global catastrophe that has targeted everybody's memories. And when a stranger shows up at the estate, this family doesn't know whether to attack this man or trust him as if he were one of their own. This is quite a film. I'll tell you, in a word, Glasshouse is tantalizing, as it's a dystopian post-apocalyptic landscape unlike anything I've ever seen before, bold enough to take things further than what you would normally find in other dystopian films. And honestly, I don't want to talk too much about what the film entails because there's a lot there, and a lot of it could easily be spoiled if I said one thing too much. The best way to experience this film is to simply see it for yourself, as blind as humanly possible. The main thing I wanted to say about it, however, is that a big part of the film is all about memory, and how much we depend on memory for survival, for our own sanity, and just to be considered human. I mean, without it, we're monsters. This film uses memory so much, and so brilliantly, that you, the audience at home, feel just as lost as these people feel, as if you can't fully trust everything you see. You want to, but there's always that fog that won't lift from your eyes, that there's always the possibility that something might be off. And I love that about this film because even though it does take place in this post-apocalyptic dystopian landscape, which, you know, obviously is not very realistic in comparison to our own world, you can still relate to the characters because you're feeling the same things that they are, which I think is just plain brilliant. Also, props to the production design and costume departments for helping make the look of this film feel accurate and real. Also, props to the cinematography, which never ceases to amaze me during Fantasia Fest. Seriously, if there's anything that I can count on with any of these films, it's just that there's an art form in all of these movies, and the same can definitely be said here. Also, because there's only a handful of characters in this movie, it did a pretty good job providing each of these characters with independent purpose, drives, and chemistry with one another that is both concerning and 100% believable at the same time. And a lot of that had to do with the actor's portrayal of these characters. This is an example of a film that knows what it's doing and knows how to tell a captivating and engaging story and it is easily one of my favorite films of this festival overall. Do I have any negatives? Well, not really. I think ultimately it's a solid film that definitely achieved what it was sought after. I don't think it's perfect, but I can't specifically pinpoint any weaknesses that the film runs into. You know, I might not care to own it for whatever reason, but I'd still rewatch it and discuss it with other film fanatics because there's definitely things here that people could talk about after seeing it overall. Let's take a look at my final score. From an unbiased technical perspective, this is a solid film overall. You know, some of the first things that you'll notice is what the film looks like. So production design, set design of the glass house itself, cinematography and the like. Then you'll probably notice the dialogue as the script has a lot of poetic moments that make this film that much more intriguing and engaging. Then I would say the premise, the acting, the mystery, all of that. It's all a very well put together film. This score is 84%. As for my bias score, this is a bit higher than the other because it's definitely an odd but remarkable film that I wouldn't hesitate to recommend to others. This score is 88%, which means when we average out the two scores together, we come to the final rating of 86%. 86 out of 100 possible stars or an A minus letter grade. Guys, have you seen Glass House? Let me know in the comment section down below if you have what were your thoughts on it? And if you haven't, are you looking forward to watching it? And as for YouTube, you guys know what to do. Hit that like, subscribe button, and bell to be notified when I come out with my next review. And until then, peace out. Dave examines movies. We just watch for fun. Davey is the expert. He is the number one. Critic that I go to when I need.